think your hair is smoothing out already. Oh yeah. You hear the difference? Look, it's no, no longer it's black smoke coming out. It's just uh, the mist uh, from uh, cold air. Good afternoon, YouTube. Uh, today is another shop day. I got some exciting stuff uh, that we're gonna do. Um, as a reminder, just to bring you up to date, uh, this is my Maverick R. Uh, it's got the Evo tune in it right now, which is the 91, 93, 96, 100, 110, and with or without bang on each one. And of course, it stores the stock tune. So what we're doing today is we are upgrading to E85. To run E85 on these cars, we've got to give it more fuel. To give it more fuel, we give it a better fuel pump. Uh, Evo has a couple options for you. One, you can send your fuel pump into them, or you can do the kit yourself to upgrade your own fuel pump, or you can buy the whole assembly. I opted to buy the whole assembly. Here's the fuel pump down here. Um, you can see it's got a new top on it here. Uh, this is the key thing here. It has a rising raped fuel pump so there's a little bit to it than just swapping up the fuel pump uh, one thing we've got to do is we've got to run a boost reference so we're going to run this hose right here and it's going to go from our boost tube uh, we've got a port over here sorry so we've got a port over here it's on the back side of this boost tube it's hard to see so we're going to have to run that uh, vacuum line from that boost tube up through the center cowling uh, the console and up to the fuel pump here so as you might have caught a glimpse of boom i got the uh the shocker head pipe to put in also um but i don't have the muffler yet however i just got noticed yesterday that they are shipping the muffler so i'm excited about that so today it's going to be e85 time uh we're going to get everything on there so we can run e85 we're gonna pump out my old fuel. I was actually running 100, and we're, I just went down this morning and I got some E85. We're gonna put the E85 in there, and we will be able to fire it up. So, here we go. So, first thing we gotta to do to uh, get this install going is we need to get access to the fuel pump. So to do that, we're gonna take the fuel pumps under here. So we gotta take some panels off, and we're gonna follow along with the uh, Evo instructions here. And we're going to show you how to get that uh, access going. Okay, so we're going to start by taking off some of these panels. This one here, excuse me, this one here, if it hasn't already flown off for you already, as the instructions say, <laughs> it may have already been gone. Okay. And now we're going to take off this panel, which And now there's a uh, there's a screw back here behind the A pillar. The instructions say 1030. Mine is a T25, so yours may be different. Couple of 10 millimeters right here. And there might be a third. Okay, so after taking this lid off and then unsnapping this one, this did not require me to unbolt this over here. That's my mistake. Uh, you have uh, 10 millimeter nuts here. You have a T25 screw here. You take that little cap off, expose the other 10 millimeter nut, uh, and then this part is ready to come out. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this bracket right here. It's uh, two 10 millimeter bolts, one in here, one right here. This one's a little bit hidden. 
When you pull the bracket out, careful you don't lose these bolts. That's where a magnet will help you. I went ahead and I wiped this down and kind of blew it out so it would be nice and clean. Very important part of this process is the orientation of the fuel pump. If you notice there is an arrow right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then down here on the top of the tank is a box. And I hope that helps you to see by outlining it. But you want that arrow to be pointing to the middle of that box. And what that does, that orients the float and everything else so that uh, it doesn't interfere with the inside of the tank and your gauge will read properly. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this plug and we're going to move this fuel line. Uh, by remove this plug, we have to take this little safety clip off, this gray clip that gets removed first. These uh, safety clips can be difficult sometimes. I just got like a small eyeglass screwdriver going with the back side here and I don't know if you can see that but it pushes down the tab and then I can just pop that off. From there now I can push down this tab and remove the plug. There we go. Now let's do this blue plastic clip here. Careful you don't break it. It's not on there very hard. It comes off pretty easy. And if you guys have ever undone your fuel line from your uh, fuel rail back at the uh, engine before, it's going to be a similar situation as that. Just going to push in and pop it off. Get a little fuel spray. Just have a rag handy so you can clean that part up. Okay, next part we're going to do after I uh, tie this off the side here, make sure it's out of my way, is we're going to take this nut off. When we take this nut off, there's some pressure. Uh, there's a spring, going, so it's going to want to pop up about a half inch. So just be aware of that. And once that pops up, you can remove the whole assembly. Okay, what I'm going to do to break this loose, because I can't get a strap wrench down in there, uh, and I haven't found an offset strap wrench before, is I'm just going to take uh, something with a blunt end, like this file here. Uh, don't want to use a chisel because I don't want to chisel off some ears here. Uh, this with a blunt end, and I'm just going to take this here, tap it with a hammer, and knock it loose to where I can do it by hand. Uh, little tip here is when you pound on this, fuel's going to bounce out of there, so just keep a rag over it. Okay, get ready for that pop. There it goes. All right, let me get uh, something prepared here to crab that gas as I pull this thing out. All right, see how messy I can make this. Pull that angle here, helps get the fuel off the top. Careful, there's a rubber gasket on here you don't want to tear or lose. Watch 
for that uh, float. All right, it's gonna be messy no matter what. Just try to do your best. All right, yeah, so we went through a messy part here. How do you pull that fuel pump out there without splashing fuel over the place? I don't know, I couldn't tell you. Um, but this is a great opportunity to show you the difference between the fuel pumps. So this is a fuel pump assembly, but this is your fuel pump. This is the factory one. The tubes go down to here, siphons and picks up through the sock right there. This is the Evo fuel pump. Stock fuel pump, Evo fuel pump. A little bit of difference there, for sure. Um, so just want to show you, it's not a myth. You are getting something for what you pay little fuel pump big fuel pump uh, also this is the perfect opportunity to drain out your old fuel uh, remember we're going to go to e85 now so what i add in here is 100. Um, i could go through the filler neck but since this is wide open on top i'm just going to use my jiggler and get it out let's see how it starts off here go she's coming out of there got good flow as you can see that that thing's flowing like crazy all right see how dark the fuel is that's because i had 110 next 91 110 is darker but next 91 got 100 so we're gonna get that all drained out get as much fuel as we can out of there it might take two cans i might have had over five gallons in this tank um, so let's get with that and then we'll go with the reassembly. All right. Well, luckily I had less than five gallons of fuel in this thing. Uh, I just want to show you how good these jigglers work. I mean, look at this. I haven't moved it. You can see there's like a little sump in the bottom of the tank. If you can see that. And it really, it really takes it out well. Um, now this jiggler here, this is nothing sorry i'm trying to keep it from spilling it's nothing super special but it's not the harbor freight one you see um what kind of stands out is it's got this blue hose and the diameter is a little bit smaller um it's got some writing on there i don't think it shows the size but the hose is a little bit on the stiffer size and it's a smaller diameter so you can get it like through the uh, filler neck of a vehicle that uh takes unleaded fuel or whatnot um, but i think the, the hose being on the stiffer size really helps to carry those those harbor freight ones they they flatten out and then the you lose good suction uh, where i find these at is at like a, a loves or a, a flying j truck stop um, i don't know i think like 10 or 15 bucks um, but I just wanted to point out this, this is not the Harbor Freight Jiggler. Um, that one is larger diameter and the hose likes to lay flat. It won't hold open and round like this one does. Okay. So, okay. So the new fuel pump comes with a new seal and a new locking ring. And so what you want to do is you want to put the seal onto the fuel pump. And then we're going to put some dielectric grease around the outside of it and then slide it into the tank uh, clocked at the right position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this seal on from this side so I'm not stretching it out trying to get over this, this outer ring right here. Uh, we're going to kind of do this in steps because I can't really hold the camera and do it at the same time. Okay, so I slid the seal on from this side and when I did that, it went up to this collar here and it went on really, really nice. Um, if you try to do it from the top side, you're really going to have to stretch that seal out um, to get it over this outer lip. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put dielectric grease around the seal so I can drop it in the tank and make sure I have it clocked to the right spot. Okay, I put dielectric grease around the inner perimeter right here. And I also put it around the seal uh, pretty liberal. 
uh, because one thing you don't want to do is fight this thing going in. Okay, we got an arrow here, and we got our box over here. So remember, you want to end up with that clock the right direction. You don't want to come up like this and try to get in. You want to have the float down and dive it in. There we go. And we're going to bring it down. Nice and easy. Make sure our wires are tucked and not dragging. It seems weird to have wires inside your fuel tank, huh? Okay. So at this point, this, it's bottomed out on the bottom of the tank. So here's where we do the delicate dance of trying to get this pushed down against the spring, get the seal into the tank, and get the locking ring started. locking ring in position that way I don't have to pull my hand off to hold this to get this back in uh, I got my arrow where it needs to be and see if I can get this in past the seal make sure it's not pinching the seal it has kind of a double layer I can feel it pinching back here. I'm just running it in with my finger. Fortunately, I used lots of dielectric grease and that helped. There we go. There's one more step on that seal. We got to push this thing down past. There we go. There it is. It kind of gives you a false sense that you're installed. But it's not. Let me get it past that second lip on the seal. I'll show you that lip here as I get this in. You'll know it's not going when you can't get this locking ring started on the threads. Okay, got my arrows lined up. Uh, let me show you on that seal what's going on. Okay, this is the orientation of the seal when it's installed. I'm gonna flip it upside down so you can see what I was fighting. See this has this little lip right here? Very soft. Um, so as you go in and try to push this in, these things will peel back and be pinched. So as you're going in, you just have to kind of make sure that thing's going in there right. It kind of works like a sweeper. So when, once it's in, you got this double layer going on. Fuel splashes up, it pushes out, and the more pressure you have, it more it seals. But um, this little ledge right here, outer ledge, will fold under and get stuck. So make sure you get that in there all the way. Second thing I was kind of fighting is I thought I was installed. And you're not installed because you see there's an extra lip right here, another sweeper. So you'll get it down partway into the uh, neck. And then you have this one. So you have to get it pushed on past that. And you'll feel the difference. And then basically you want to just shoot for this little gap. This is the this uh, thickness of the seal here. It's about the same thickness as the uh, fuel pump housing. So you know about a quarter inch is all you want to feel there. Okay, fuel pump is all secured in there. I just basically get this outer ring as tight as I could with two hands. And then I took my blunt object again, which in this case was my file. And I gave it a couple taps, gave it about a good another additional quarter turn. So I feel pretty secure about it. This is going to be the most tricky part in installing the whole thing. Is just make sure you get that gasket on there and not be pinched because you don't want to end up with any leaks. All right, we'll move on to the next steps. Okay, so that is probably the hardest part of the job is just getting that new fuel pump installed with the seal and being confident that you haven't pinched the seal, that you got the locking ring tight enough and so on. Um, once you get past that, everything else is, is cake. And even that's not hard. Uh, all right, so we 
had power from here before going to the factory fuel pump. Here's the thing. This power comes from the ECU. The power is supplied through the ECU. Remember how small the factory fuel pump was? So what we're going to do now, instead of powering that bigger aftermarket fuel pump from the ECU, because it's not a lot of power. Look, look at how small the wires are. Evo has come up with this wiring harness. So what happens is, is we're going to power it up uh, by plugging in here in series. Um, so we have the trigger from the ECU and so on. Uh, but the power is going to come directly from the battery. Um, we're going to tap into the bus bars underneath the uh, front um, center of the hood. And then what's going to happen is now it's going to be triggered instead of the just solely being powered from the ECU. The power from the ECU is going to trigger and go through this relay and it's going to draw power from the battery. Um, we need that uh, good source of power for this new larger fuel pump. Okay, so like I said, we're going to have a relay up here and we don't want this relay just flopping around. So there's a spot here on this mount, hopefully you guys can see it from there, that's already slotted for the end of this relay, that we can slide that new relay in there. We just have to drill a quarter inch hole here, and Evo has supplied a nut and a, a uh, screw uh, to hold this relay in. So that's what I'm going to do next before I plug everything in. Okay, so I've got my hole drilled, and right here, and we're going to install the relay. And we've got the screw, which is a 25 hex torque on it. And I'm just gonna drag that in there. Okay, so I've got that screw in there. I've got this relay here. Uh, real pain in the butt until I figure something out. Quarter inch ratchet with a swivel head to get that nut on the backside. Uh, man, that made it so much easier. Before that, I was uh, getting a little upset. <laughs> okay. Okay, installation tip for you. This fuel line was uh, seemingly too short. Uh, but when I looked down lower there, I saw that there was a uh, zip tie, factory zip tie. And by cutting that zip tie, it allowed me to pull the fuel line out and up where it feels like it's going on right now. Before, it's just right on the edge. And it was actually, I think, going to tear a seal in here and this thing wouldn't wouldn't seal right. So I gained about a, a over an eighth of an inch on the length. So now I can get this fuel line on here and feel confident it's not going to leak. See this, hear the snap? That feels a lot better hearing that snap. Get our blue locking ring on there. Make sure it stays on. Feel much better about that. Okay, now that the fuel line's on, we can put our brace on. I want to do the brace before we do the wiring because the brace takes up quite a bit of space in here and I don't want to fight it. it so, we'll get our couple of screws started here and we'll get our brace going. This is a big car. Sometimes you need a step stool. Now that our brace is on, now we have a better idea on how we can route our wires and get it all snugged in there. Okay, I, I kind of want to show you guys how I wired 
this uh, routed everything here. Um, we talked about mounting the relay. Well, there's also a 30 amp uh, breaker. So I had to drill the hole out on the little leg for this 30 amp breaker to quarter inch. And then I was able to mount both of these items here. Otherwise, this 30 amp breaker was going to either need to be zip tied or bounce around. Um, again, I put this brace on first. Um, the lead going to the fuel pump is a little bit long, so I was able to run it through here and just kind of tuck that down. Uh, we have our power leads. Uh, we have a 12 volt power that is going to go to your 12 volt here, not the accessory, 12 volts right here. And then we have our ground. Our ground is further away. I'm not sure why this wire is shorter than the power wire, but the uh, the ground is further away. So um, it's there's a little bit of tug on there, but it's just the tension of the wire. It's, it should be okay. So that's kind of how I routed that. We still got to do our boost reference here. Uh, but I just want to show you where we were so, so far and uh, it's tucked down here uh, pretty nice and neat so far. I do want to tell you about one other thing. This area down in here, be careful. It's a trap. <laughs> you lose things here, it will go all the way down and it doesn't come out the bottom. So just be very careful. Um, this was uh, a little bit aggravating getting the nut on there. Uh, having to do it a couple times after I figured I was going to tie the breaker there. Just be very careful you don't drop things in there because they will be gone. All right, so I'm kind of anxious to uh, make sure I don't have any fuel leaks. So one thing I want to do it, to test that is I'm going to put some fuel in it. And I'm also going to replace fuel pump number F28 from the factory 10 amp fuse to the EVO Supply 20 amp fuse. Let's show you where that fuse box is. It's behind the driver's seat. And I apologize, this don't come out very well, but it's gonna be this taller, skinnier uh, box here. Not that one. So, we'll get that going. And, You can see that number 28 is a little bit more than halfway down. So I'll get that swapped out and I'll, I'll show you after it's done here. Okay, it is the fourth fuse up. One, two, three, four. And we'll put the other one in. This thing is always the most uh, even ergonomical positions here. All right. One, two, three, four. It's got a 20 in it now. Okay, I just put in five gallons of E85. And this area right here is where I'm concerned about um, any fuel leaking out. So I'm gonna see if I can get the camera going here for you. And I'm gonna try to prime it a few times. One prime. She's beeping because it's in uh, permanent neutral. Well, there's five, at least five primes, and she is dry as a bone. That was a little bit of worry because at first that was a little fight to get on there. I thought I might have scraped a seal or something before I undid that zip tie down below and gained that little bit of slack in the line. But uh, I'm wiggling a little bit and there's no fuel leaking out whatsoever. That's a good sign. 
Okay, let me show you how I routed the boost reference line. That's this line right here. And it is connected with a clamp because it's boost, not vacuum. It's going gonna, it's gonna to see boost and we don't want it to blow off. So I've got it underneath this clamp and you need every bit of a line that Evo gives you. I don't know if you can see it down there. I stuck a light in the console just so you can see that uh, there is a, a pathway there. So I st started here and I put the boost line down through there and came out under the console. So, so it came out under the console here. I've got it here. It's running down through the center console. Now in the back here, there's kind of like two opportunities. There's, there's an upper one and a lower one. The upper one seems very logical, but the other side of that gap right there on the upper is the oil cooler. And really, I don't see how you could um, really get anything through there um, extra without it resting on the oil cooler. The lower one, the concern is you're getting down close to the drive shaft. Uh, I did choose the lower one and we're gonna go on the other side and I'm going to show you uh, why and how I routed that. Okay, I came down through the lower one. Apologize, not a lot of area. And you can see the oil cooler right here. That was a concern about the upper one. It just dies right to the oil cooler. So I came through the lower one and I ran some sheeting over the line. And what I did right here, sorry, is I loosely attached this line to the harness, so I think is the temperature sending unit, um, there to keep the line from dangling down into the drive line. Now you want, excuse me again, you want all this excess because it's going to be rather hard to get to the boost tube and get the clamp on and everything. Obviously you can see I took the boost tube off um, for this part of the installation. So let's go over to the boost tube. Okay, boost tube, sorry, is off. It had this single plug in it before. Took the plug out, put in the supplied elbow from Evo and put the hose clamp on it. And I want you to notice the angle that I have it at. This is going into the, or coming out of the turbo. And see it's not in line, but it's kind of off to the side. And that's actually kind of what Evo shows on their instructions too. I think that's the best route to get the line on there and to get a clamp on it and to keep it out of harm's way. So the next trick I'm going to do right now is try to get this boost tube back on, be able to get the boost reference line on here and put a clamp on it. Okay, so I know this is going to be hard to see, but so I got the boost tube back on the top here and I did not reattach the bottom yet because here's my, my boost reference line. And now what I can do is I can pull this out. Sorry, guys, about the light. Now I can pull this out, have access to it, attach my boost reference line, put the clamp on it, and then put this back on and attach the uh, boost tube to the turbo. Okay, boost reference line attached, clamps on it. The clamp is on the, the uh, teeth clamp is on the turbo already. It just makes it a little easier. Man, I'm so sorry, guys. This angle is going to be difficult to show you all. Get that on there. Slide the teeth clamp back over. And we'll tighten it down. Okay. Bottom of the boost tube is on. And here's my boost, my, my uh, boost reference line. It uh, looks like there's a lot of extra sitting there, but uh, again, when you pull this out to have access to get it, this tightens up. So we're about ready to uh, fire it up. Okay, so we have no fuel leaks. We got the boost reference line connected, both ends. Uh, we got our wires connected. Remember, we're powering the fuel pump by the uh, battery now instead of the ECU. We also added a fuse uh, for the trigger on the ECU, give it a little more strength so it doesn't blow in a 10. We put a 20 in there, get everything all tucked away here. 
uh, before we put all our plastics back on everything we're going to try to fire it up so it's got five gallons of e85 in it and uh what do we need to do we need to tune it it's still sitting on a 100 tune so we're going to connect our evp code shooter fire up the app Turn the key on. There we go. It found the code shooter. When you go to E85, it's going to give you a different set of tunes. Uh, I did already uh, go down and download those different tunes. It's a different set of tunes than without E85. Uh, you're restricted to uh, 91 tunes and the 80, 85 tunes. Okay, so available tunes here is I'm going to put the uh, X85 Bang Bang Rising Rate with uh, adjustable launch control. X85 adjustable launch control, Bang and Rising Rate. Okay. Have I done all this stuff? Uh, yep, uh, everything's on there. And we're gonna download. So now we're downloading the tune from Evo through the cloud. Uh, that's gonna put it down into the code shooter. After that's done, then we need to um, remap the ECU on the car. Remember, there's two steps to it. It's easy to think you're done when it downloads this uh, tune from Evo. Okay, uh, just wanted to show you, it's been about two and a half, maybe three minutes. Uh, we're 97% done downloading the file from Evo, 100%. Uh, and now it's preparing and doing a 10 second countdown to flash the car. There's nothing you have to do on your side other than don't unplug it. So, two, one, and here we go. All right, start flashing. So now it's flashing. Ignition's still on. And our flash progress down here is up 1%. Um, it starts off kind of slow, then it speeds up after that. We're already at 2%, so uh, we'll check back in in a second. Just checking back in with you a second. We are at 74%. Okay, it just now, uh, Finished, it went from 95 to 100 like that. Um, it says splashing done. And reconnecting to the code shooter right now. And it'll tell me the current tune that's loaded as soon as it syncs up to it. Connected. All right, last load of file, Mavar Stage 5X85, uh, ALC adjustable launch control, bang and rising rate. All right. We're there. Now we're going to get this thing fired up. Okay. So, well, if it's dark in here, I apologize. Um, so, went through the whole process. Not super complicated. Just be methodical about it. Um, you know, one little thing in the instructions said that uh, that screw over there by the A pillar was a 30 Torx. It's a 25 Torx. No big deal. Everything else is pretty straightforward on the EVO instructions. Um, I just showed you a little extra things that I did um, in regards to routing the boost to boost reference tube, how I did it and why I did it the way I did. Um, very concerned about that seal around the fuel pump sealing and concerned that, uh, that the fuel line seals. Uh, your car may be different, but uh, my fuel line was just too tight to get onto the EVO pump. It's in a slightly different position and slightly taller um, hard line coming off the pump uh, so it made it real tough but once I cut that zip tie that was down below the dash it gave me enough slack and it was no sweat after that so we're gonna try to fire this thing up it's on the e85 tune remember we still have 100 octane fuel in the line and back uh, full of the fuel rail so it's gonna cough a spit for a bit but let's see what happens
See, didn't like it. It'll happen though. It's just coughing and spitting a little bit. It'll clean up here real soon. I'm gonna go back out and double check my fuel line. Make sure it's not leaking. Yep, he's running rich on the E85 tube. Everything looks good here. Very rich. Because it has a lot of fuel in there. Still dry as a bone right there. Oh, I think your hair is smoothing out already. Oh yeah. You hear the difference? Look, there's no, no longer is black smoke coming out. It's just uh, the mist uh, from uh, cold air. It's smooth now. Yep, smells like french fries again. So that's that's pretty good, really. If you got that 100 fuel in there, it's got to get uh, burned up, uh, taken out, and we're on that E85 tune, you know, with the fuel pump, the big fuel pump, and it's pushing a lot of fuel and everything. And you know, I think it took maybe not even 60 seconds to smooth out. Let's, uh, let's try and kill it and restart it and see how it sounds. Fire's right up. Nice. Throttle feels snappy. Feels very snappy. So it's the stock exhaust, but I can hear that turbo whining. I didn't have those sand tires on, I'd take it out in the rain. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, let's finish up this video. Alright, so there you go. Uh, the E85 uh, tune and the fuel pump and stuff that you need along with it on the uh, Canon Mavic R has been installed. It's pretty easy. If I did again, it probably took me half as long. Hopefully some of the things I went through and shared with you would help you with your experience. Um, the Evo instructions are dead on. You can do it with that. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe what I did helps some. Anyway, you guys uh, tune back in soon. I'm going to get these sand tires off of here. Hopefully I got some dry weather uh, tomorrow. I took this out and rip it a little bit get a feel for it, learn how the launch control works on it, and give you guys some feedback on that. Uh, in the meantime, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, please like, share with your friends. It helps out the channel quite a bit. Uh, we're going to have, uh, well, this is going to give me another excuse to go back to Glamis at least one more time this season. Uh, it's almost 500 miles for me, but uh, man, I can't wait to try this thing out. So, till the next video, thanks a lot.